we're going to be focusing on work planes and using work planes to create uh, unique geometry. And so we're going to start out by creating a, a unique part shape and we're going to put some holes in this unique part shape which are going to require us to develop work planes um, for the object. So we're going to go ahead and start our new sketch. It's going to pop up uh, sketch surfaces. We're going to start on the XY plane since most people are familiar with that environment. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a shape and revolve that shape. So uh, we're going to create a really interesting shape here. And again, since we're sketching, we'll clean this up. Uh, we'll go ahead and use perpendicular and clean this part up so these square off. And those are already in. Dimensioning, uh, we're going to go ahead and dimension this. And we're going to need to draw another construction line straight up. So this is going to be a separate line that we're going to create straight up here. And we're going to select it and make this a center line. So we're going to pick the center line button. This is now our center line. Our dimensions now, when we dimension from the center line to the object, are, no, are now going to be based in diameter values. We're going to go ahead and make this uh, 1.0. And so that's roughly a one inch diameter or a half inch distance ultimately here. The rest of the dimensions are going to be linear based and so we'll go 0.4 and quarter inch and that blows that out and so ultimately what we're going to need to do is stretch this and so what happens is if things get crossed over like this the easiest way to fix that is just to take and drag them out and if you drag them out it solves the problem of having it crossed over and not getting proper dimensioning capabilities. And so that's going to be a quarter. This is going to be a quarter, 0.25. And height-wise, we'll make this one inch. And we'll make this 0.625. Um, the angles we can set up, and 145 is nice. Uh, this one is going to be a half inch, and we'll keep this unique angle like that. The depth of cut here is going to be 0.25 uh, with that, and that's not a really good dimension to have. The way that that's set, uh, it would be best to set it back over on this side instead, because we don't like to have that cross over. Um, like same thing with these. These, are mo these got moved pretty far away. It'd be best to move these a little bit closer. So, so we should be able to grab them and move them a bit closer to the object. And if you want, you can always drag the, uh, the, the dimensional text to the opposite side so you don't have the crossover issues, that kind of thing. All right, so we've got our basic object. Let's go ahead and finish our sketch and revolve it. So we'll finish the sketch. We'll hit revolve. We're going to revolve this piece. It's going to be revolving around the center line. It's already figured out the profile and the axis of revolution. We'll do a 360 degree revolution and we'll choose OK. And now we've got our object and it is isometrically positioned. The interesting part is what if we wanted to make this flying saucer have holes on this angled surface or holes on the bottom angled surface? Well, the holes would need to be perpendicular to that surface to make it look proper. Now, we could drill them directly from the top surface down, but they're not holes then. They're going to be ellipses uh, based on the angle that the drill bit uh, would uh, intersect that. Plus, you'd get some drill bit wander uh, based on hitting that vertical drill bit on the angled surface. So we're going to go ahead and try to drill these perpendicular to this angled surface. So with that being our goal to put holes around that, this angled surface, we just can't pick the surface and say, go ahead and put a hole in. We actually have to create a work plane for the 
uh, hole to be positioned at. And it's going to take us a couple of work planes to do that. So first off, we're going to be working, and again, we're not in any sketches at this time, we're going to be working with the work planes, but before we do anything, we're going to pick a work axis. And the work axis is going to be based on the center of our part, and we need that to help position some uh, work axes perpendicular to the overall part. So the first work plane we're going to uh, position is going to be based on this axis. And then over here in the browser, we have the ability to open up the origin folder and we can select some of the original work planes, like the XY plane that we started drawing our object on. So you can see when I applied the work plane, I selected the center, uh, the center axis, and then I went over and opened up the origin folder and selected our original XY plane. But you notice that it automatically says 90 degrees, and so this brown colored work plane is what it's doing. The original XY plane is in blue. Well, realistically, I want it at zero. But the point being is that you can rotate this anywhere around this object. So you can get the work plane positioned exactly at the angle that you need it. And in our case, setting it at zero is appropriate. You also notice the positive direction of movement. So positive x, y, excuse me, positive z is going to be positioned in that direction. So we now have a work plane. And you can see how it slices through our part. On this work plane, we're going to put a sketch plane. And so we're going to go ahead and put Start Sketch. We're going to pick the edge of the work plane, and we select, and we have that work plane. Now, a really cool feature is that now that we've got this work plane, I'm going to go ahead and hit the House button here, the Home, and flip it up. If I hit the F7 function key, it literally will cut our object away so we can see the inside of the object shape. So it's one of those things that once you have a sketched uh, sketch on a work plane, the F7 function key does this really cool feature. And so it kind of cuts the object away based on where you have that work plane and the sketch applied. But, real, but the reality is, is that this particular sketch, what I need is this diagonal line, because this diagonal line is going to become the basis of where we're going to be putting our holes. So I need to project that geometry. So I'm going to pick Project Geometry. I'm going to project just this angled line. might be a little bit tricky. That's why I hit the F7 function key to cut it in half. But I also zoomed up or magnified it. So that way I know exactly what I'm selecting here. Because you can see that it's going to try to select a lot of different objects as I move my mouse around. Notice that it now projected it. It's yellow. That's all I needed to do with this. So we're going to finish the sketch. So that sketch is, is not going to be used where we can actually turn it off later. But right now, that sketch is going to be the basis of our new work plane that's going to be placed on the surface of that diagonal object. So we're going to put a work plane. We're going to pick this line. And then we're going to pick the surface. So that line and the surface signify the work plane environment. And if I grab my view cube and I rotate it, you can see how this work plane is actually perpendicular, excuse me, is actually parallel to the surface and is actually applied on the surface of that object. Uh, so that's the interesting thing. So all we did was we created a work plane to slice the part. We projected the geometry to a new sketch that we then used to actually create another work plane. But we're not done yet. We're almost there. Remember, we said we had to create holes to make this look like a flying saucer. So I'm going to put it back in the house position here, the home position. Now we're going to have to either put a center mark or we need to drill a hole. And I like doing the center mark for the hole command in this scenario. So to do that, we're going to have to create a sketch on this new work plane. Now, if we wanted to make these rectangular, we could do that. We could use the hole command to make them round. 
we can make them counter board with the whole command anything that you want to do is possible once we have that sketch projection and the position on this surface so I'm gonna go ahead and pick start sketch I'm gonna pick the brand new work plane so that's the new work plane that's on the object surface. Now if things get flipped around or the direction is incorrect, meaning that you flip it and you're looking from the underside, there is a way to actually take and right mouse click on the work plane and flip the normal. If you flip the normal, the positive Z direction flips from one surface to the other. So if you didn't get the correct direction, flip the normal and life will be much easier for you to see what's going on. So we made the new sketch. Remember this line was projected to this particular work plane. Well now we need to project that same line to this work plane, to the new one. So we're going to use the project geometry, project that line. So that line is now projected onto our current geometry. I know it didn't change color. It's still yellow. And when you do this process, you can always project an extra one if you need to. If you forget, did I project or didn't I? Just go ahead and project and project it again. It's not going to hurt anything. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and create a new point. And this point is going to be for the hole. So what's nice now is now that I have geometry, I have to be careful here but there is a center point on here, right there. And notice that I zoomed up, and you might have to zoom up even more. And here's the reason why, because other geometry, like this, this uh, background arc, uh, or background circle, is being displayed. And if I keep moving around, you'll see other things get displayed. But what I want to find is that green dot that's on this line and that green dot is pretty close to that circle so that's why I magnified up that is the midpoint of that projected line so now that hole is going to be directly in the center on that angled surface which is exactly what we're shooting for so that point is now placed we're finished now that we've placed the point, we know exactly where it is. Now what happens if I wanted to make that point not exactly in the middle? Well, I could put a dimension to that point from the top of that line, and I can control the location of it along that line space accurately. Right or left doesn't matter. The right or left was controlled by where we rotated the original work plane to cut the object in half. So we're going to finish the sketch. We're now going to use the hole command. So this particular hole command, we're going to do a simple hole. And there's a variety of different holes that we can do in terms of clearances and tapped and putting threads in it and a taper tapped hole for like plumbing fittings or a hydraulic or you know any gas or liquid type fitting is a taper tap hole. Um, we're not going to counter bore or counter sink or spot face it. So it's just going to be a simple hole. Uh, the termination is not going to be through the object, but we're going to terminate it as a distance. So it's not going to go all the way through to the bottom. And so notice that when we did that, it now gives us two dimensions. So now we have the diameter and we have the depth. Right now it's a quarter inch diameter hole. We'll see what it looks like as we, as we select this point, because the point uh, the location of it is going to be on this particular point. And so that quarter inch is pretty big. That's way bigger than what we need. So we're going to need to shrink this down. And we're going to go 0.125. And you can see the 0.125 much better. Um, if I do a 0.25, you'll see that the 0.25 uh, actually isn't bad either, so I could do either one. The, the original one, why it was so big, it was not updating properly in that initial graphic, so that's why typing this value in to verify the actual size is important. The depth, I'm going to set the depth to 0 0.50. If you want, you can go ahead and hit the house button, hit the front button, 
on the view cube and now you can see how deep that drill is going to occur. And the key is you don't want it intersecting the bottom uh, of the object. You also didn't want that to be intersecting the uh, space under it. Remember we put a slot on the, in, uh, on the bottom. So right now it looks okay and so we'll say that's going to be our hole. So we made it a quarter inch diameter, half inch deep, we'll choose OK. Notice that it's also going in the right direction. If you do not see this object, you need to flip the, uh, the direction of the hole. And that's right here. So we can flip the direction of the hole. And if we have a drill point, which most do, we don't, we're not going to run a reamer in it and make it a flat bottom or it's not a Forstner bit that we're drilling it out with. So it's going to be a regular drill point angle. We'll choose OK. So we have our hole, but now we need to also take this object and then multiply it all the way around the surface. So we're going to do a rectangular, or excuse me, a circular pattern to make that happen. So we're going to pick circular pattern. Uh, the feature that we're going to select is the hole. Notice that when I highlight this, and it, can, it gets, again, tricky because there's a lot of different selection points here. So we're going to select just the hole, and I'm, notice that I'm picking the inside of this whole surface to, to make that selection. So the inside of the whole surface, the rotational axis, is that original axis that we created. And right now we've got six holes on a 360 degree position. So each hole has a spacing of about 60 degrees. We can do 12 holes. Okay, so that's now a 30 degree spacing. Uh, if you do more than 12 holes, um, if you do 18 holes, that's a 20 degree spacing uh, between each of the, the hole centers. Now, it could get it to a situation where the holes will intersect each other, and that would not be good either. So if we did 18 holes and we chose OK, and again, the cool thing is we can always edit this. And there we have 18 holes around the outside of the object. So it does look very flying saucer-like uh, at this time. So your task now uh, would be to create some very small holes on this bottom angular surface that do not intersect into this slot. Okay, that do not intersect into that slot. And then you can make a fully very interesting looking uh, flying saucer. One final point. We talked about this projected line and we've got some sketches that are not consumed. Remember we created sketches um, because we needed to create that projection that projected geometry. So ultimately, we want to hide the sketch. We can right mouse click on that sketch in the browser, turn off the visibility. And when we do that, that yellow line goes away. So if you see extra lines in your drawing, more than likely it's a sketch that either you started a new sketch and there was an existing sketch already there, or in our case, we actually had a sketch that we only needed for projection and not uh, actual consumption into the design of the product. Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye.